Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues This is Session 2, Part 5 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance where Jesus and Mary continue discussing the operation of God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance focusing more on God's truth about the personal emotional processes relating to forgiving and repenting. The session was recorded on 5th of September 2017 from 12.20 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. So let's talk about the emotional process of repentance. What kind of emotional process and changes might I go through as I engage and complete the process of repentance. All right, so here we basically need to say exactly the same yes. as what we said for the emotional process of, re- of forgiveness. forgiveness. However, there are some additional steps as we can see from mm-hmm. our previous uh, question. Yep. And, and so we, we, we need to see what these additional steps are. Mm-hmm. But first we start in complete denial yeah. that we're doing anything wrong. Yes. And getting through that denial phase is one of the most difficult phases of our, it's going to be one of the most difficult phases of our entire life. Mm. Because once you are aware that you're sinning, now that at least there can be some motivation to correct it. Mm. But if you believe that every action you're taking is not a sin, it's justified, you're not going to get beyond the process of denial of your sin. So what creates a difference in people? Some people you can say to them, look, you're sinning there and they just completely dismiss you out. It's like Teflon, I call it, just slides right off. And then there's other people who you can say, look, you're harming another person there. And while they might still have resistance and they might have been in fairly strong denial about it beforehand, it bothers them and they start to look at it and you start to see a change. What's the difference between those two individuals? Can I ask you when that's ever occurred? Well... And what is the underlying reason why it occurs? Can I give you the answer? <laughs> yep. I mean, I have my theories, but I'd like... The only difference the between those two people is the level of self-reflection. Mm. A person who is extremely arrogant and extremely absorbed by their own behaviour and feels that their own behaviour is completely justified, has, and particularly when they're harming others, has no level of self-reflection at all. Mm. And those people are, like you say, like Teflon. Everything just slides straight off them. Yeah. Every word you say. I've had people like that in our seminars who have come along for eight years and they're still exactly the same when it comes to their sin. And I've seen you be direct, direct with those people. Right, direct. Because, see, they're so like Teflon that they believe that what's being said to them can't be true. Hmm. Just can't be. It just doesn't penetrate their emotional. That's right. World it just can't be true. Yeah. It's not true. That's not what I'm like. Yeah. And they just dismiss it out of hand. And I see some of those people say to you, "Oh yes, you're right," but I can feel that they don't. No, it doesn't. They learn to say, "Oh yes, you're right," because that's what their facade demands. Yes. But the reality is, they don't feel I'm right. Yeah. Because if they felt I was right, they'd be gutted. Yes. By oh, what yeah. I'm saying. Frequently. Sometimes when you say things to me, I'm <laughs> exactly. gutted. Yeah. I, and it takes me like I have to sit Weeks for twenty four hours over it, like and even. just consider the impact of what I've just been told. Yes, those people have no love of truth. The Teflon people. The Teflon yeah. people, no love of truth, no love of des- no desire for truth. They're only being motivated to go there generally to attack other people, mm. to enc- to engage in their sin further. Yeah. They sort of see it as an environment. They see our seminars as an environment Mm -hmm. in which they can engage the attack of others. Mm. They see our seminars as a good environment to put people down and Mm. to feel superior and so forth. A good environment for them to feel like they're doing something when they're not. Yeah. Mm. Okay, thank you. So going back to our question, this is the difference, like Mm -hmm. 
you said you were speaking about being in denial mm -hmm. as the first sort of stage of yep. <laughs> entering repentance and some people obviously i see linger in denial for many years and others there's cracks in their denial there's cracks but man it's like the cracks are usually few and far between and this yeah. is why these kind of people often take tens or hundreds of years in the spirit world in the hills before they really crack. The Teflon people or the mm. other people? I'm talking about the other people with, who have fairly rapid mm -hmm. cracks. No, I'm saying there's very few people. I've never seen a person have rapid cracks. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Not a person who's fully entrenched in a lot of sin where they're harming people. I've never seen them have rapid cracks. So then is it also fair to say that some of us have been raised to feel like we're harming others constantly when we're when not, not? And we are far more open to being, to being told the truth about when we are because we're already open to that idea. Correct. So you're more um, self-reflective. Yes, I see. Mm. Yeah. But the average person who engages sin in a real malevolent way or engages their addictions in the same manner. Yeah. Very, very hard to convince those sinning. Mm. And you can, like, you know, you, you know, as I as I have done 14 years now of talking mm. to people about addictions yeah. and their emotions associated with addictions and how many people have actually removed their addictions. Very few. Oh, well, it's You see occasional right. ones remove one addiction here or one addiction yeah. there. Majority fully entrenched in yeah. their sin. Yeah. Fully entrenched. And, and it's only love of truth, yeah. desire for God, desire to be humble, mm. desire for love mm. that is ever going to get them beyond that point. Mm. And unfortunately, the more entrenched you are in sin, the less your desires you have for those things. Yeah. So it, it's sort of like very hard. It's very hard to, to motivate people who are entrenched in sin to no longer sin. Mm. And the more sins a person's committed, the more pain they are going to have to go through and also the less desire they have to go through it. Yeah. Very hard to motivate them. So when it comes to uh, speeding up the process of repentance, which well, is... Well, this is really more now we're on to... Oh, just the emotional the, the process changes, of repentance, The yeah. processes and change. So denial yeah. is a massive part. It's really, you're not there engaging it. And yeah, denial most is a people big you're saying, problem. Live in it for, for thousands of years. Uh, maybe not thousands, but certainly tens or hundreds of years, even after they've passed. So they live for their first hundred years of earth life in complete denial. Yeah. And then usually it takes another hundred or two years before they start to undo some of the things that they've been, you know, need to undo. Yeah. Um, and don't forget that the next hundred years after their earth life is pretty intense. Mm. If they stop sinning, after they pass, and it's a big if, because most people continue who are sinners on earth continue sinning after they pass. Well, they just stay on in the earth plane. They stay on the earth plane yeah. when they're earthbound in a sinful condition, continuing to engage sin. Once that, once they become exhausted through that process because they degrade their condition so much, they can't even maintain the energy of staying on earth anymore. Mm. Once they get to that point, they're now in the hells. Once they give up the concept of being out of sin anymore, mm. then they come face to face with their sin. Mm. And that process is anywhere from a no, usually another hundred years. Mm. And then they start going through the process of repentance. So they have a hundred years of continuing to engage sin afterwards, and then they go through the process of repentance. Now, if they go through the process of repentance without repenting towards God, that can take another thousand years. Mm. If they go through the process of repentance engaging God, that can take 10, 20, 30 years maybe. Mm. But, but it's not going to be a short process either because there's a huge amount of damage they've done. Well, at least 200 years worth of sin. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If people knew the truth of that, yeah. they'd be a lot more reflective about what they're doing. Mm. But most people on earth have no belief in that and therefore have no reflection about it and don't even care about it. In fact, they say, oh, when I die, I'll deal with what happens after then, after then. <laughs> Not realizing that, you know, they'll be dealing with what's happened now after then, yeah. as well as what happens then after then. <laughs> yeah. They don't realize the severity of the problem. So whatever you do, the very first thing that you need to do is get out of denial. 
with regard to your sin. Yes. Get out of denial. And honestly, you know, there, there needs to be a lot, of all the listeners who listen to us, there needs to be a much stronger focus on getting out of denial with regard to their own sin. Because unless they do that, no real progress is ever going to be made on earth. Do you think there'll be a few less listeners after this? <laughs> well, it's a few it's unsubscribes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just well, about now. <laughs> well, you know, um, no, we're not saying people it, love having right. their ears tickled. Yeah, I, I refer to that frequently in the first century. How yeah. people love to just hear the nice bits and turn off to the what they believe are the ugly bits or what they believe are the untrue bits. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. But you and I have had plenty of 2,000 years of experience of seeing the hells. We know what the hells are like. We've spent a lot of time in them trying to help people out of them. Mm. We know how difficult it is for a person who purposefully sins to get out of the hells. And, uh, I, and I personally have a lot of experience with sin in my first century life yep. uh, and in this life, really. But, yep. um, and so when I try to assist people to see their sin now, it's with a lot of compassion mm. and, and a knowledge that ceasing to sin is going to make you a happier person yeah uh, uh, yeah it's but also knowledge of how difficult it is to come yeah. face to face yeah. with it all uh, uh, yeah and and becoming the most difficult process like we're talking about the emotional process of repentance the most difficult part of the process of repentance is coming face to face with what you've actually done from god's perspective yeah now god's willing to tell you mm. but most people are not willing to hear it because it would shock them. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. we really have to remove our resistance to that truth from God, to, to remove our resistance yeah. to the idea that I have sinned. We have to remove our resistance to truth from any source yeah. about our sin, Yeah. whether that be even people who are angry with us or upset with us, or yeah. whether it be people who we've harmed, or whether it's uh, people that you know ha ha have got our best interests in heart and are telling us things just because they love us, even though it's not hard, or it's very, they know it's hard for us to hear. Mm. We need to help, help people get beyond the point of complete denial yeah. into a point of at least seeing, yes, I do that, and yes, it's a sin. Yeah. And then we need to help them feel about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're not even going to feel about it unless they see it. And, and we talked a little bit about this while um, we were preparing these outlines. Is it fair to say that um, once I establish, basically, that I have sinned and it did harm others and I want to remedy that, it's almost like the rest of the process, God designed my soul for it to go through it. Um, if I have a pure desire. Yeah, but even though this is a problem, isn't it? Even though we, even though we now acknowledge that there is a sin that's been committed and I have harmed others. Yep. I'm yet to really have an emotional desire to feel about it. Yes. Probably. Yes. So once, yes. But once I have a, a sincere desire to remedy the sin yes then i will develop that desire naturally to feel about it will i not or does it come in the reverse really well it depends on the person oftentimes yes. doesn't it yes it's like, it does you yeah. know from our personal experience yeah. we can okay. see some people do it one way and other people um, do it other be way yeah. of course there are certain things that which we've written down that need to occur so yeah so let's talk about let's them. look about them but yeah. but the very first thing i need to come to recognize is the truth about that i've sinned and yeah. and and that while it is only one statement mm -hmm. can it's... take hundreds of years of our life yeah because <laughs> we've got all these supporting justifications for why we are sinning and yes. why it's not a sin and yes all these belief systems, as we talked about in our resistance, uh, yeah. how to speed it up. We've got all this resistance, all this denial, all this stuff going on, and even that we like it. Mm. We, we like what it gives us, the power yeah. it, that we feel with it and the power over other people that we have and the power to hurt people. And we're, we're not honest about all of this. And then when it comes to our addictions, we're completely blind. Yeah. How, how our addictions harm other people. Mm. We, we, we've got you know no clue whatsoever usually yeah and and i'm talking here about addictions to fear and addictions to 
you know, putting yourself down even mm. and other things like that. You know, mm. these all harm other people in different ways and and they're all sins yeah. that we need to repent for. Yeah. Yeah, often it's com we're completely blind. Yeah. And getting from a state of blindness to a state of awareness is the most difficult part. part. Mm. Mm. And even wanting to get to a, from a state of blindness <laughs> to a state of awareness. Having that desire to get out of denial yeah. is a massive thing. Yeah, yeah just, just to become aware. Mm. Most people, are, I, I, people who we've talked to for 10 years have no desire to do that Yeah, still. Yeah. The majority of people who we talk to for 10 years have no desire to do that. Yeah. And the one time you point out to them something, they just ignore it. You point it out another, ignore it, point out another. As you know, I've had many hundreds of conversations with some people pointing out exactly the same thing. Mm. Ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. When I act, act. they it's ignore nice. it. Yeah. They tell me that I've got the problem because yes. I'm now telling them, no, it's not on anymore. Yeah. I've got the problem now. And then they keep their sin by actually engaging rage and anger towards us. Yes. After that. Yeah. That's the average person's response yeah. to becoming aware yeah. of what sin they're engaging. Yeah. Mm. I always find it sort of amazing because if you do look at the world and the pain and suffering that's in the world. Someone must be causing it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> well, how can it be that none of us are causing it? You exactly. Know? It's just, it's obvious. It's obvious. And mm. it's obvious that other people are sinning. So why do some people find it so hard to see that we, are per that they, are per I mean, I don't find that hard to see that no I'm sinning. No self-reflection, yeah. no desire for truth, yeah. no desire to love, no desire for God, no desire for loving relationships, no desire for humility. Mm. And so there's a lot of qualities they're going to have to develop. And, and, and God's very patient with them, mm. but God also is not going to let them get away with any of it. Mm. And that's why they have a very difficult life fr frequently, yeah. particularly after they pass yeah. for hundreds, if not thousands of years before yeah. they enter a state of repentance. Yeah. And usually it's even hundreds of years before they even engage God's help yeah. to repent. Because yeah. to engage God's help, you've got to admit there's something, there's something to repent for. That you've done. You, you move beyond just the operation of compensation. Yeah. yeah. So most people are going to be under the operation of the law of compensation, which we'll talk about next for hundreds of years, yeah. because they choose to be non-self-reflective. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. But once you've had that recognition, then you go through a few more things. Let's yeah. Talk about now it. you've now you'll go through some emotions. Yeah. <laughs> Before yeah. then, the only emotion usually you feel is anger at anybody mentioning anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> and even before then, it's usually, ah, oh, water off the duck's back, it's not me. Yes. <laughs> Must yes. be someone else he's talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's yeah. usually what we feel even before the anger, uh, anger begins. Yes. So just denial, rage. Denial, rage, and then you might admit, yes, you did sin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and we laugh, but it's actually quite sad. Yeah, it is. It it's is. actually quite sad. It it's, is. Uh, it actually, and all this while, still harming others. All this while, yeah. still harming others. Yeah. You know, you can see why God does not give an inch. Mm -hmm. Because every person on earth that gets an inch expects to take a mile, as the saying goes. As the saying goes. You know, it doesn't give a centimetre because yeah. every person wants a kilometre from it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and comes to expect, expect it as of well. Of course, yes. Yeah. yeah. And people's concept of God is severely distorted in this regard, mm. thinking that God will let them get away with murder, literally. Yeah. And, and no, God mm. doesn't let us get away with anything. Yeah. And even though you said that people have, after they pass, their experience is quite difficult, what I notice is that when we willfully engage in sin on earth, we might be getting a lot of addictions met that buffer us, but actually, you can't say that there's lasting pleasure or contentedness in the life of anyone who is willfully sinning constantly. No, not at it's all. not a happy existence. Any outsider looking at their life can see that it's, life's pretty messy. Yes. But, you know, we're not self reflective. And you that see. they're full of rage and demand and that, that it's written all over them. Like we said, it becomes written all over you when you don't forgive. It's, it's not even written same. all over them. Their whole life generally is a pretty messy place. Yes. Yeah. Makes yeah. no difference to them.
And it's only for many of them who have learnt to be recluses, you know, mm. learnt to be people who basically live by themselves uh, that could say they could ignore most of it, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But even that is there's a lot of pain associated, loneliness and other exactly. pains associated yeah. with it. Yeah. yeah. That they're obviously still ignoring. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Mm. All right, so now we, we're out of denial. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's a few things we might do, have to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so after I've dealt with the resistance to the truth I have, that I have sinned, mm -hmm. I'll emotionally recognise my sin and my desire for that sin. Mm. So I need to see that I want it. Yes. I need to see that it is a sin, but I still want it. Yeah. And that's a process then of working through why I want it, why I feel justified in it, and letting go of all of those things. Yes. They're all emotional beliefs that I have to go through an emotional process to release. Yes, and I'm going to have a lot of anger in that process. Yes. Because I, I want these things. And yeah. I, so we're getting taken away from me. It feels like everything's getting taken away. Everything that I want is getting taken yeah. away from me. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like I'm losing everything. I'm losing everything. Yeah. You know, it's like, how unfair is all this? It'll feel unfair, feel unfair. even though it's not. Yes. It's yeah. just a writing of the imbalance. Yeah. But but because a person who sins and who desires to sin is so imbalanced, yeah, they always feel like they're getting things taken from them. Yes. Mm. And this is the damage that a lot of parents do to their children by breeding in them a sense of entitlement to yes. things that and a lack of ethics and a lack of morality when it comes to the treatment of others and feeling superior to others. Yes. All of those things are going to be very difficult for that child is going to have to give that up at some point in their future and it will mm. feel very painful not because they have been sort of hurt, hurt in a, in the way that other children are hurt yeah mm. they have been hurt in that they've been told a lot of lies they've been told they're superior and they've been told they're good and they've been told they're great and they can be told they they can do anything they want and doesn't matter what it what happens to anybody else when they do it and that might not have felt that bad when it happened but giving it up is going to feel very bad because yeah. they feel like i'm being well, that's taken a part down. of the compensatory effects of what they've done it is and yeah. we see don't we a lot of children in this state too and it's very very sad to see children in that state because yeah. the parents are basically creating monsters yeah and we've said that to many yes. parents so you know if you yeah. keep doing what you're doing here you're creating a monster and, yeah. and the monster's going to be very very hard yeah. to to remove yeah well a lot of those child. adults that we were speaking of earlier were raised in that way yeah have become monsters yeah, yeah. as a result yeah yeah yeah. Not because that was their underlying nature, but no. because of the damage that was done by feeding all of these very, you know, superior based emotions. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Okay. So once we let go of all of that um, superiority, entitlement kind mm. of emotional beliefs. Mm. That then, I should be able to sin. That I should, the, the feeling that I should be able to sin. Mm. Then I start to get close to the emotional experience that is the cause of my sin. Because all of those other things aren't necessarily the cause. Sometimes they are, this feeling that I'm entitled. But sometimes there's other events, isn't there? Yeah, well, I, I probably would say here we'd probably need to put that we feel some other things first. Um, the first thing I feel before then is that we start to feel about the results of our sin before oh, we feel yes. about the cause of our sin. Yes. So... Yes. Um, you know, we start to see, oh, look at that person and how much I've hurt that person's life and, oh, God, you know, and you start having these feelings of, oh, I wish I could do something. And a lot of times yeah. we're powerless to do it too because the person now is so steeped in the damage that we've done to them that they can't, we can't assist them yes. to, to get out of it. But know? we will have this overwhelming desire to actually alleviate their pain of course we will yeah yeah, yeah. so As we, we, we yeah. want to try to help them overcome it but 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 we can't really we fully can't do that fully do that yet because mm. we have not yet felt through our own sin either. but also we can't really do their process of forgiveness for them either. no we can't mm. uh, and and there's a big part of the conversation there for us we realize wow i've caused all this damage and now i can't actually take it away from them mm. they have to let it out themselves. Mm. I, I can't take it away. Yeah. I can help them take it away by removing from myself the reasons why I did it and, and by admitting to them that I did wrong, but I can't take it away. Mm. Uh, they have to do that for themselves. Yeah. And when you feel about that, whoa, there's a lot of mm. really sad emotions there about that, you know, about 
how we hurt another person and we can't even take it away anymore and yeah. and those kind of feelings are pretty strong you know when we go through those feelings yeah then we get to the feelings yes of the cause of what we did of, of why i did it of why we did it which is about forgiving our childhood our parents yes. our yeah. our past decision you know yeah what whatever happened in whatever our past whatever happened in our past mm. and and so all of this is a very emotional process <clears throat> It's going to involve a lot of kicking and screaming, at probably like resistance. Well, particularly the first phases. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of rage and anger and, uh, you yeah. know. And then there'll be sorrow and grief as we work through those things. And the grief is Shame. going to be much worse than a grief of forgiveness. Yeah. Because it, there's, there's going to be shame about what you've done. The feeling how that it's harmed it was others. Yeah. And there's also then going to be... Uh, you know, grief about what you've done to others, yep. grief about how, how it's affected you as well, mm -hmm. you know. And then, of course, you've still got to go through the process of forgiveness yes. after all that. Yeah. So you can see it's going to be a much longer time. Yeah. So therefore, it's highly inadvisable to sin. It is. It is. <laughs> and uh, because you can see that it's going to be a much longer time correcting that than correcting the harm that somebody else has done towards you. Yes. Yeah. But once I'm through this process, I'm not going to feel guilty about what I've done. No. Nope. I'll still I'll have full you remember knowledge you remember of what it. I did. In fact, I'll have better, clearer understanding of exactly what I did and how it was harmful. And you'll recognize every sin from God's perspective. You, I'll you're see it, that it was all sin and how God saw it. Yeah. And I will never actually sin in that same way again. Yes. Once I've completed repentance on the issue. Yes. Now, fortunately... God has these laws, the laws of divine love, that can assist us greatly through those particular processes. Mm. However, the laws of divine love will probably not be engaged by us until we have a recognition of the sin. Yeah. So that's before that, until we're out of that denial phase. Yep. And until we're out of the justification of the oh, sin the phase. Sin. Yes. So all of that, we can't really engage God's laws. We have no. to get out of justification, entitlement, superiority, all of that stuff, and yeah. then say, here, I can feel I harmed someone and it wasn't, I yes. had a choice not Once to. Once we enter that sincere phase yes. of really seeing the harm we've done to others and wanting God's forgiveness for the harm we've done, now we can be helped by God's love to speed that process up yep. immensely. Yep. But to get to that point after Excellent. we've been willful sinner yep. is a long road. Yeah. A long road. Mm. And if we decide that we're going to ignore God altogether, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's an immensely long road then. Yeah. Yeah. Immensely yeah. long road. So, yeah, it's a very important to, to, for us to see that the process of uh, repenting is a very, very difficult process and it is much preferable that we don't sin yeah, definitely. than it is to have something to repent for. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. If you can stop sinning or not make the choice, because we always have a choice whether it's to sin choice. or not. It's a choice. And if we're even intellectually aware of sin uh, and we can make a choice not to engage it, it's going to be way better. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, if we could at least see that, at least that, if that was at least engaged on the planet, mm. the planet would be a much different place to live in. Yeah. Much different place. Yeah. There'd be no wars. Yeah. I mean, no rapes. There'd be no, you know, food shortages. There'd be no children dying of starvation. There'd be mm. no abortions. There'd be no, you mm. know, there'd be no a lot of things. Yeah. Or, or just because of that. Just because of that one mm. thing. Yeah. Mm. Let's yes. look at why repentance often feels unfair. <laughs> we just spoke in our previous section about how a lot of people feel quite indignant when mm. you point out to them that they have something to repent for. Mm. And because they're living fully in their justified state, uh, sinning uh, on a daily basis, they often feel what you're saying that they have to do is unfair. <laughs> mm. But let's talk a little bit more about that in depth. Um, so, well, perhaps uh, many of these things relate to forgiveness as well, obviously. Yeah, they but, do. And we're repeating ourselves at times here. Uh, aren't we? At times, but, but it's very important that we see some. Um, 
we feel unfair, we feel a lot of times we feel it's unfair because when things are taken away from us that we expect to be able to engage, yeah. we often feel that's unfair. Yeah. So, we, so if I've got a feeling of superiority, that I feel like I'm more important than you are, and my, my, my life's more important than yours, and I should be able to do these things to you yeah. and get away with it. And if I've got those feelings, and then it starts getting taken away from me by going through a process of repentance, I'm going to feel like, whoa, I feel like all these things that are being, are being taken away from me now. You're being unfair to me, taking mm. away these things from me. You know, mm. That's what I'll feel. Mm. So, as I said, that's a, you know, often we feel it's unfair when it's not. It's just a writing of the balance. So at this stage, my superiority is up here and, and I should be down here equal with everyone else. Yeah. And to come from there down to there, I think that's a humiliation. That's a... Yes. Uh, and I have all of these big emotional responses, none of which are justified, actually. Yeah. Um, for the removal of my condition back to an equal condition with the rest of society. Yeah. Mm. What about, so we have instances, for example, where um, women have been hurt by men. Maybe someone's been sexually abused mm -hmm. and then they carry rage with them all of their life they think all men are mongrels and they're just punished men and, and want to be in charge of men and and badmouth men at any any opportunity or whatever so they actually feel they've got good reasons for hurting other people yeah so that's can... the first problem isn't it yeah thinking that you've got good reasons for hurting others yeah and so we feel it's unfair that we have to actually give up the, that hurt of people yeah um, we're not thinking very logically there no. either, are we? Because we're hurting a lot of people who haven't hurt us. Correct. Yeah. And what are they going to do if, if they took our actions? They'd have to hurt us back. Yeah. <laughs> or other people who haven't hurt, hurt them at all. Mm. And so, yeah, it would create a lot of problems. Yeah. So, yes. so but this uh, it's a whole, I have a good reason, you know, like a big one that women use is I was afraid. So that's why I did it. Yeah. You know, that God doesn't value your fear. Yeah. God values love. He doesn't value fear. Yes. You say you're afraid and that's why you did something. That matters not to God. Yeah. The fact that you did it is the thing that matters. Yeah. And you used fear as a justification yeah. for doing it. That's unethical. Well, what about, you talk about women in that relationship to fear. What about men who say, I had to do it to protect my family? Exactly. I had to you know, do why it. Why do most men go to war? To protect my family. So called. You know, yeah. To protect my family. Yeah. Or protect our way protect of life. Protect my pride or, or whatever if somebody says something. So exactly. it, that's all just justifications. Yes. And, that and while I have these justifications, I'm going to think that, what? Repentance? <laughs> I've got so nothing unfair. to repent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Another way we can feel repentance is unfair is that we feel we shouldn't be made to pay the penalty for what we've done. So we should get away with things. We we feel that like <laughs> I should be able to get around this law. You know, I should be able to manipulate my way yeah. through things. If I put on a pretty sad face, you know, then everyone should everyone think let I'm, me off the hook. Yeah. Yeah. We have it. We have this belief a lot of times because in our childhood. We, we, we learnt that manipulation of other people's emotion was the way to get away on things. Yes. And so then we, as adults, become manipulators of other people's yes. emotion. And, uh, and we think we should be able to manipulate, we should be able to manipulate God, you know, and manipulate yeah. God's laws and get around it, you know, yes. somehow. And, and often, you know, we feel like, because we spoke in our first session about, you know, God's laws are assessing everything down to our intention, our thoughts, our emotions, mm -hmm. you know, not just our actions here. So mm -hmm. a lot of people feel like, well, I only tried to, you know, I only thought about murdering my husband 20 times a day in my head. I didn't ever actually act on it. I might have said a few foul things and, you know, punished him emotionally and yeah, all these wanted things. somebody else to kill him, for, kill him for me yes, so and, that I didn't have to go to jail. And <laughs> actually emotionally manipulated my son into kind of attacking his dad and yeah. having a problem with his dad, all these kind of things. But but I feel like it's all just so unfair. It's, gr it's 
nitpicky god's being fussy here mm. you know god's so we can feel mm. it's unfair because well we even go further than that we really go like most of the time we go like no i can manipulate god i can just have a little cry and he'll, yes. he'll let me off the hook yes because yeah. <laughs> that's what's always worked up until that's now what always worked with my dad yeah <laughs> a little cry and he let me off the hook yeah. <laughs> yes yeah oh <clears throat> Blaming our victims is another way that we feel... That's a very common thing. insidious and horrible. It's terrible. You, you know, if you look at all of the racial prejudicism that's occurred in the world, you look at, you know, like in America with, you know, the, the, the way the blacks were used in slavery. And yes. you look at uh, other countries now, right now, every mm -hmm. country pretty much has racial prejudicism well entrenched in it. Yes. If you look at all the racial prejudicism that's occurred in the world, it all starts because of this particular thing that if, if other people are weak enough so-called weak enough to be bullied or manipulated into doing what i want then and i should, I should get, away with it. get away with it mm. they should stand up or it's some horrible things i've heard said uh in, in um amongst people who come to our our discussions is mm. well Sure, I treated I was treated you badly, but that's your law of attraction. Oh. <laughs> I treated you badly because you wanted it. In other words, yeah, because you you allowed it. God allowed, allowed it. it. Like yeah. it's just a terrible misinterpretation of everything, and also a terribly oh, abusive statement. And just so and also things. demonstrates the character of the individual, how dark their character actually is. Yes, their lack uh, of regard for their own unloving actions. Yeah, there's a person who's going to spend many, many hundreds of years. Yeah, having to have a breakthrough. Yeah. You know, because yeah. of that kind of belief yeah. system, yeah. Mm. Okay. Or we feel like someone else forced me or encouraged me or taught me to do the wrong thing. Yeah, this is very common. Blaming mm. your parents for it or yeah. blaming some bad friend who yeah. insisted you do it. or yeah. and, and this is all about not having a backbone, not having yeah. courage, not having the ability to stand up for what is right. Yes. Yeah, so th there's deep flaws in these kind of reasonings. Yeah. Um, you know, so let's talk about some of the flaws. Yeah, right? let's, yeah, that's because the flaws are very interesting. Yeah, mm. yeah. So mm. I'll I'll mention the ones we've listed, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the, all of the logic in all of those justifications that we just listed is flawed because mm. number one, there's never a good reason for hurting anyone else. No, never, ever, from God's perspective, ever. And there's never even reason if they're hurting you. No, ever. It's never justified. No, ever. Secondly, God's going to force me into taking personal responsibility for what I've done. Even if I don't personally want to do that or I'm refusing to do that right now, God is the, is the bigger power here and God's going to yeah, force it's me like, to. It's like you beating your head against an immovable <laughs> <Yeah>. object. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. you know, there's no way that you're not going to have to come to terms with what you've done. Yeah. No way. There's not, God's not going to let you, let, he's not going to let you, get away with any single thing. No. Ever. No. Yep. Believing that he is, that, or that you can manipulate him into doing it, is just going to delay your own progress much, yes. much more, longer. And getting angry about it and having a tantrum about it. Well, just delays. Just delay, delay. delay. <laughs> Do it turns, if you need turns a 100 year process into a 500 year process. <laughs> um, thirdly, as we've just basically said, not only is God going to force me to take responsibility, but all of God's laws are immovable and consistent mm -hmm. and they're always in operation and will continue to operate whether I want to deny it or not or ignore mm -hmm. it or not. And they are mm. operating on my soul. It's a whole scientific, whole business going on. Yeah, Nothing is hidden. certainty. Nothing is hidden and it's down to the smallest particle yep. is yep. assessed. Yeah. So, and people who regularly sin don't believe any of that. No, well, they can't. They can't. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to sin. Yeah. So, so this shows you their false beliefs. Yes. Yeah. A person who's regularly sinning has huge amounts of false beliefs. Yeah. Yeah. Emotional false beliefs. And they're all, as we said earlier, they're all going to have to be removed in order to yeah. emotionally removed. Yeah. Process. Emotionally removed, and uh, and God's going to ensure that it happens because yes. God's laws work right down to the end. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, fourthly, only I have control over my unloving behaviour. Yes. So attempts to make other people responsible for it, to justify it in other ways, or to say that uh, there was a good reason for it. It's not, not going to work with God. Mm -mm. God sees you as a self-responsible being. Mm. Being self-responsible being. You're going to be responsible for every action you took. Yes. And you, whether you like it or not, God's going to make you responsible. Yeah. Similarly, only I have control over my decisions and choices. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Yeah. Self-responsible being. Yeah. Mm. Next, I should, I should not desire to control or manipulate others. Yes. Saying things like, oh, I can only manipulate them because they wanted to be manipulated. Yeah. That, that is a terrible, terrible indication of your condition. Sure, the person might want to be manipulated. But sometimes they don't. Well, even if they did, yeah. it's still no justification to you making a decision to do so. No. And in fact, you're going to still be penalised for doing so. Yeah. Whether they wanted it or not. Yeah, it's so terrible. So this applies to your addictions. Whether another person wants you to feed their addictions in a codependency or not, the fact that you're doing it yeah. is unloving. Yeah. You will be asked to pay for it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. And lastly, I am going to experience more and more pain until I stop harming others. Yeah, yeah, this is another thing that most people who are not repentant deny. Yeah. They continue to perpetrate unloving behaviour towards others, thinking that it's not going to result in some penalty to themselves. Yeah. When it is. Yeah. And the penalty to themselves is going to be far greater than the damage they've done to others. Yeah. The damage that those people have to feel about mm -hmm. the person. God's laws are going to ensure that I am going to pay the full penalty yes. for any un unloving behaviour I have towards others. Yes. And there's no escaping it? No. Unless you engage the laws of divine love and they can only be engaged under certain conditions and you're not, if you think have this viewpoint, yeah, you're not in the condition. Yeah. yeah. You will pay the penalty. You will. Mm -hmm. And But even that penalty is there because God's laws are attempting to help me to release the emotion, yeah. emotional... So it's important to point this out. Yeah. It's not punitive. No. I, I it's there to clear. correct yeah. us. Remember God's laws are educational. They're there to correct us. They're mm -hmm. there to basically put us through a process yep. where we want to correct ourselves, in yeah. fact. Yeah. And and so they're not punitive. They're not trying to create more disaster in our life in or fact, anything. In fact, they're actually trying to limit the pain in our life. Correct. That, you know, if, and the if pain these, in the lives of others, I should say, as if well. If these things did not happen, yeah. then, then we would probably engage sin yeah. without restraint. Yeah. And a person who engages sin without restraint yeah. is going to cause huge amounts of damage to the world, to other people, to themselves. Right? If, if, if there was no restraint, imagine life, yeah. what life would be. Yeah. What we have now on earth, even with how bad it is, yeah. is with the restraint. Yeah. Now imagine if there was no restraint. Oh, yeah. it, it, would be, it would be shockingly hellish condition yes. yeah. without restraint. Yeah. Fortunately, God has put into place these laws that create restraint. Mm. And even with the restraint, it's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> it is. But we should, but we, but we really should emphasize. But it's of our own making. It's of our own making and all of God's laws are operating constantly to help us awaken to this sin. Of course. And, and even us being so firm and direct about it right now is an attempt to awaken people just to the to the um, gravity of the situation. Yeah. And it, in a way, we can be very uh, reassured that God's laws are going to ensure that I take personal responsibility. They are going to ensure that I remove the cause of the sin and the penalties won't stop until I do that. Because that means that God is actually creating a safe universe for everyone, ultimately. And also a happy one. Yes. You know, obviously sin is the primary cause of unhappiness and pain and suffering. Yeah. So, so you know, the removal of sin is essential yeah. for happiness. Yeah. So God's intention, remember right back at the beginning, we said God created laws in order to make you happy. Yeah. And, and these all these laws that govern the process of repentance yeah. are all there in the end to make you happy. Yes. 
but not only make you happy, you see, a person who is not repentant is only interested in their own happiness yeah. to the detriment, of, detriment of other people's happiness. Mm. Now, see, God's laws are equal. God's laws want to create happiness for everyone, not just for you. Mm -hmm. And this is where the selfishness comes in with a person who's not repentant. Yeah. They think that happiness should be just theirs yes. and no one else's. And that's obviously not going to work from God's perspective. Mm. God wants everyone to be happy, not just you. Yeah, mm. yeah, mm. absolutely. All right, so repentance initially feels unfair because of my own resistance to the pain I've caused to others and mm. myself mm -hmm. and the desire to continue to cause such pain. And that's probably very crucial, isn't it? The desire to continue. Yes. Um, so we could also say, in addition to that, repentance even feels unfair before then because the process of becoming aware of it mm. feels like you're having a whole heap of things taken away from you. Yes. And also becoming aware of it, you become aware of the compensatory pain. Yeah. So there's the additional compensatory pain that's not due to resistance, mm -hmm. but due to your desire to sin. Yeah. That needs to also be felt. Yeah. And that's why it often feels unfair there too. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Very true. Mm. Let's talk now about why and how repentance is a very personal experience. Yeah. So why is it necessary that repentance is a personal experience? Well, we can see that we did the wrong. Yeah. We, we committed the sin. Every sin we committed is also very unique to our desires and our wants and our superiority and our arrogance and our whatever other things that cause belief systems that caused me to choose to sin. Mm. That being the case, my emotional experience is going to be very unique to me. Yeah. Mm. And, and must necessarily <laughs> be engaged by me because it's all me. Only equation. I can do it. Yeah. Nobody else can release my sin from me. No. Nobody else can. No. Nobody else can even and re release the cause of it either. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to have to do all of that. It's going to feel like a very lonely yeah. process. If you don't engage God with the process, it's going to feel like a very lonely process. Mm. Because it needs to be. Mm. We are personally responsible for everything we've done. In fact, part of the process of repentance really is, isn't it, where initially when we're in denial and justification, we want to blame everyone else for what we're doing and mm. say it's all because of this person and that person and because of, oh, I'm entitled to it for this reason and that reason. And really if properly engaging repentance brings us all the way back to ourselves and says, no. Nope that was all my choice and I had different choices and I made these sinful choices and it was all me. And eventually we'll get down to some causal reasons why we'll we made know why. those choices. We'll even know why. We'll know why we did it, but mm. we will take personal responsibility. That's the process. Yes. That's how it's designed. Yes. To say... I, we know that we had that particular upbringing that causes us to have that particular belief and then we acted on that belief. Yes. And yeah. did something to harm yeah. others. We saw ourselves harming the other person, yeah. but we still went ahead and acted on the belief. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And if, in fact, if it wasn't this personal process, then I could sin mm -hmm. and then get away with not paying the full penalty of that sin. Mm. If, I, if it wasn't this personal Which process. Which would encourage me. To continue to sin in that same way. Yeah. And I wouldn't actually ever fully come to comprehend the full impact of my sin either. No, not on no. other people, on myself, on the environment. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. So I'd sin more and, and as you mentioned earlier, there would be this tendency to continue doing it in increasing ways because I'm getting away with it more and more. Yes, if I felt I was enjoy, enjoying the results of my sin. Yeah. Um, if I felt there was rewards for myself. If I felt there was rewards, mm. um, you could see that I would probably increase the amount of my sin and the types of sin. Yeah. Till the point where, you know, I could destroy the whole earth, in fact. Mm. Well, and if you <laughs> think about this situation on the earth, we talked earlier about having a large global agreement for sin. Mm-hmm. 
and we do see don't we on the planet at the moment where there's a large lot of collusion really amongst humanity mm -hmm. to continue to sin in ever increasing ways god's laws are operating to correct that mm -hmm. and and highlight the problems with that sin and that does happen mm -hmm. but there is still this tendency in people when they don't want to be sensitive to the compensatory effects that they do continue to sin in compounding ways don't they yeah uh, i think in big areas though you know with regard to war and murder and um, yes it's very rape clear. Yeah. and things like this yeah um for the average person on the planet there is an awareness that these things are sin yes um it's the areas that they don't see that mm. are going to be problematic. Yeah. Yeah. But, but fortunately, the, uh, like for example, an abortion being a murder, that, mm. that's an area that most people don't see. And so that's going to be a big area where mm. there's going to need to be a lot of correction. And gender division, the way that different genders treat, treat each, other, each other, their attitudes Terrible to each other. Terrible attitudes, yeah. It's globally uh, accepted. Country, races, yeah. nationalities the separateness of nationalities, huge amounts of sin being committed there. Yeah. Um, the way in which uh, the world's wealth is distributed, yep. huge amounts of sin being committed there. The way in which the medical profession works and the um, there are some things that are really good and there's some things that are terrible, huge, yeah. you know. And, and so in every area of life, in every facet of life, politics, religion, religion has a huge amount of sin to yep. compensate for. Yeah. Um, we can see in the, almost every area of life, there's areas where we have come to recognize certain things generally mm -hmm. and then there's areas where we're blind as bats yes in fact to be a bat would probably have more sight than what we have <laughs> <laughs> and that's why this has to be such a personal experience because we have to really mm. awaken to that and see that sin don't we for yeah unless i see all of that myself how can i expect other people to change what i am unwilling to change in myself yeah it's yeah. not it's hypocritical to yeah. make, have that expectation yeah 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 mm. all right and god wants <laughs> god wants us to stop sinning <laughs> of course <laughs> hopefully that's clear by now yeah um since god knows that sin is the cause of my pain and suffering so that's god's real motivation god wants us all to be happy yeah 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 um, and God knows that my sin often causes severe hardship and pain for those I've sinned against. Yeah. And that's quite uh, an important um, factor in why there's so much penalty and compensation. Yeah. 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 There's, a, there's a huge amount of factors, isn't there, regarding mm. what God's trying to do. Yeah. Um, and every single one of the things God's trying to do is going to be personal for us. Yes. It's going to be a very personal intensely personal process yeah um you know we we have to come to see all of the reasons why i sin you know and that, that includes things like i'm addicted to the results of sin i want others to pay for my pain i want to yeah. avoid my own pain i want to take revenge i want to live in a state of hatred i want to you know i want to even just have no faith in god's laws i want to believe that god's laws don't exist yeah. so that i can sin yeah and all these things have to be corrected yeah and god's intent is for every one of those things to be corrected yeah yeah and so you imagine for every single individual on the planet every one of us have different concepts about every one of those things mm. and so it is going to be a very personal process of coming to recognize my own concept mm. And this is why it's, a, it's such an important thing to stop expecting other people to sort it all out for us. Yeah. And in fact, that isn't in itself a sin. Yeah. We've got to start seeing that we've got to sort this out for ourselves mm. and to really have a desire to sort it out for ourselves. Yeah. And that, and that once we do that, we, we like it being an intensely personal process then. Mm. You actually like, you want it to be. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's everything that God's designed is to assist us to have more, not just self-responsibility, but self-knowledge. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. God obviously wants the planet and the entire universe to live in a state of peace and harmony. Mm. Now, in between, in peace and harmony, what it'll give us a, a higher sense of freedom and an ability to, to grow faster. Yeah. Everybody knows on the planet pretty much by now 
that the more war and turmoil and suffering there are, the more difficult it is for people en masse to move forward as a society. Mm -hmm. The more turmoil, the more it holds us back from, yeah. from, from growth. Yes. As a society. Yeah. In growth in love, growth in creativity, growth in... In every, in area, every area. In our education, in every area. Yeah. A person who does not feel safe mm -hmm. is very hard to educate. Yeah. Because fear is the only thing governing them. Yeah. If you can create a safe environment, mm -hmm. then education, more rapid education is possible. Yeah. And this is what God's trying to do. He's trying to create a safe, happy environment for all of humanity so that we can truly be educated by God mm. and enjoy the prospects of that education. Yeah. But it's not going to happen if we all refuse to go through our personal process of repentance. Yes. It's just not going to happen at all. Yeah. It just requires one person on earth not repenting. Yeah. And all of a sudden hardship is caused for everyone around them. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It's an incredible potential that's dependent on the individual Decision. desire desire and will-based choices of, exactly. of every individual. Exactly. Yeah. And we need to start seeing that my individual choice to not repent, my refusal to mm -hmm. repent, and my refusal to forgive yeah. stops everyone around me from enjoying their life yeah. besides affecting my happiness of my own life. Yeah. It limits need, the potential for that education from God. Yeah, I need to see the relationship between my own actions and what happens to other people. Mm. I need to see that we're all living in an environment, like we're all on one earth, we're all living in an environment where one person can damage it. We all need to eventually demonstrate a desire within ourselves to not do, the, do so. Yeah. And... And we can only do that by going through these processes of repentance and forgiveness. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of benefits if we do, but unfortunately, you know, many of us don't realise the benefits or we're too selfish. We're, we're, we're thinking just of ourselves. Yeah. Not considering, not considering the effect that selfish thinking and selfish beliefs have on everyone around us. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, very important that these processes are personal because if yes. they weren't personal, we wouldn't see all of those things. We mm. need to each come to these realisations. Mm. Every single person who has entered the celestial fears of the spirit world have come to these realisations. God really has a lot of confidence in her children, doesn't she, to, to, yep. to have made it mandatory that it is a personal process for each individual mm -hmm in order for certain potentials to come into being in the in god's universe she obviously has a lot of confidence in every single one of her children's ability to, to do engage this, the processes to do these things exactly yeah. not only that she's obviously got a huge amount of confidence in her laws yes that they are going to <laughs> make it happen, make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are going to make it happen yeah and this is why we had to discuss God's laws first, because yes. God, God's laws are going to eventually make every person eventually is going to have to go through yeah. repentance and forgiveness. Yeah. It's really up to you whether you desire it, you engage it with desire, or you begrudgingly or resistively do it. Do it. Yeah. And the more begrudging and resistive you are, the more difficult you're going to find your life. Yes. And the more hard you're going to find your life, the more pain and suffering you're going to experience, as well as be causing more pain and suffering and difficulties for others around you. Mm. Do you want to keep doing that? Mm. Yeah, it's a real question we need to each ask ourselves. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, that's a good place to end our session today. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much for your time and perseverance there when mm. things you got a bit attacked. Yeah, getting a bit attacked there for a little yeah. bit and very, very hard to speak when I've got millions of people attacking me at yes. the same time. Yes. Mm. So that concludes our second session in our series on God's laws and principles mm -hmm. reg regarding forgiveness and repentance. Yeah. As a reminder, in our first session, we talked about God's truth, how to determine God's truth about anything. God's laws. God's laws, why they exist and how they exist. Yep. And we started to talk about this subject of forgiveness and repentance. Yep. 
today we've talked some more about God's truth about forgiveness and repentance and focused more on you and what is going to be personally involved and if those you want feelings to. of yours yeah. <laughs> the feelings you're going to have doing it yeah. yeah if you want to forgive and repent and the importance of well, the in- inevitability of engaging it yeah. and the potential benefits of engaging with forgiveness and repentance tomorrow i think all going well we'll have <laughs> we'll have our third session in the series yeah. and we will continue to focus on your personal responsibility and role in forgiveness and repentance and um yeah that's what we'll we were hoping to get as far as conscience but i think and compensation but that's going to be in our next week's recording so we we realize we've got a lot to cover so tomorrow we'll just keep focusing on you guys yeah so we wanted to we wanted to thank you for going through with us today i know a lot of material today and uh, maybe if i just talk to you briefly about it, a lot of material today you could see is is pretty hard for many of us to face and pretty hard for us to come to terms with personally and we'd just like to encourage you to really attempt to come to terms personally with what the feelings are going to be like in order to go through these processes of forgiveness and repentance and and encourage you to be far more self-reflective and have far stronger desire for truth and to be humble so that you can actually engage those particular processes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Anyway. Thanks for joining us and yeah. we'll see you again. Thank, Thank you very much to our support team today doing this. Being very patient with us with our stops and starts all the way through the day. Thank yeah. you for that. And uh, we will see you perhaps tomorrow, depending on how we feel. I feel yeah. pretty attacked at the moment, so I'll have to go through that. Um, and we'll uh, see how uh, we go tomorrow. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to cover some of these really important aspects yeah. as well of other things in the future, you know, which we, like we said, we've got seven or eight sessions to go through with you before we get to answer the questions that some people, <laughs> readers have, and listeners have sent us. So, yeah. so yeah. Yeah. thanks for your time today yeah. and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. Go well. <laughs>